What's up, guys, and welcome back to a brand new Five Nights at Freddy's Secure to Reach update video. Now, today's video is going to be a fun one. We're going to be covering a backstage tour of Freddy Fazer's Mega Pizza Plex in Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. So, a new PlayStation blog was just posted, and it's going to be showcasing well, what the title was just said a backstage tour of the Pizza Plex from FNAF Security Breach. And I figure since Security Breach is right around the corner, and my gameplay is too, I figure let's go ahead and do a video breaking this down and getting some more hype for the game. Because, yeah, quick reminder if you guys don't know, Security Breach comes out on the 16th. As soon as it's released, I'm going to have some gameplay i'm gonna be covering the entire game and it's gonna be a lot of fun so you know if you aren't haven't, haven't already subscribed to the channel if you're new from this video hit that subscribe button right now and just stay tuned for the 16th because you already know i'm gonna be doing everything i can on that day to cover the entire game and it's gonna be a lot of fun so anyways let's go ahead and hop into this but before we do guys in the comment section down below what is your last minute security breach theory okay your storyline detail like what do you think is gonna happen with vanny or whatever just anything storyline related in security breach that you want to get off your chest before it comes out let me know in the comment section down below anyways let's go ahead and get into the article here so it says the story of the real life inspirations that shaped the location's design this is by jason topolsky the creative director at steel wool studios so uh yeah this is going to be like from the the perspective of the people that designed or directed you know the actual pizza plex so this is going to be fun so he says when the steel wool development team was given the opportunity to work on five nights at Freddy's security breach we dug deep for inspiration from our childhoods high school jobs and parental party planning duties to build the most fantastic pizzeria to ever exist we decided the best course of action was to begin with the star and central figure of this particular pizzeria, Glamrock Freddy. Everything in the Mega Pizza Plex revolves around Freddy and the new Glamrock band. Just like the original game, Freddy deserved a main stage surrounded by pizza and party tables filled with fans. However, this new state-of-the-art animatronic band would not would need even more room to move and perform. We decided to add elaborate stage lifts to raise Freddy and the gang above the audience flanked by stadium-sized concert monitors the stage would be as updated as they are oh that's cool so they actually rise above everyone performing now they do include some screenshots here and some of them are very cool so this is the first one where he's talking about you know he has it rise above everyone and uh, i'm gonna go ahead and download it and zoom in on it with you guys here but uh as you guys can see it's got the main crew performing right there on the top left and it's got like everyone watching beneath them i tell you guys and say yeah they're the ones up top above everyone else and uh you know below them is all the people watching and people walking around the pizza plex in the top right you've got monty's gator golf which is cool and uh yeah oh there's there's that ceiling that we saw in one of the original FNAF Security Breach teasers, which I feel like everyone's kind of forgotten about, but that's where, like, Vanny was outside the window with her big old knife or whatever, so maybe that's where we're going to see her at some point in the game, like, on the ceiling of the pizza plex. I don't know, but... <laughs> That'd be an interesting place to go in the game. You're on the ceiling of the pizza plex. Um, but yeah, after underneath that screenshot, you know, you guys can see right there, you've got the stage right there where they're performing. And well, actually, there's no one on stage, but all the children are there are just people that are, you know, at the pizza plex. They're just there kind of watching the show. And it looks like underneath them is a head of someone. <laughs> what is that design underneath them? It looks like a girl's head or something. I don't know why, but I'm not sure what that could be. Maybe it's like an animatronic. It just looks weird at this angle. And then on the right side, you've got, you know, Glamrock Freddy, the huge golden statue of him with like water on him. Uh, once again, the Gator Golf in the background and uh, that, that lifted stage back there too. But very, very cool to see this kind of stuff. I really hope they release some kind of an art book or something because they've got, I'm sure they've got a lot of nice art for this game. Um, but anyways, they also show this screenshot at the top, which I feel like we should go on. We should show this one before before we go on to the other storylines but this one looks crazy because uh it takes place in the museum in the pizza plex as you guys know we've seen this museum in the trailers and stuff like that and this is an actual screenshot from there but at a different angle and you guys can see okay there's a big glamrock freddy golden statue right there again um you've got freddy fazbear which that's his location right there on the in the museum which his location is actually closed off but like slightly cracked open which is interesting everyone else is just completely open uh you got roxanne wolf in the background you got monty's tour um and chica in the background too along with some other rooms which aren't labeled which could just be like bathrooms or you know ways of going backstage behind them i don't know and then to the left right there uh another door of uh you know freddy fazbear's but to the right you guys can see that there's actually posters from fnaf 1 and they're held up like displayed like art pieces which is very interesting <laughs> because uh when i was covering fnaf 1 i never thought i'd see the day that uh the fnaf 1 posters would be art pieces in a new fnaf game um also in the background it looks like there is, well, there's a giant Roxanne Wolf golden statue and Monty golden statue, but to the right of that, the Roxanne Wolf statue, it looks like that is from the pirate ride, if I had to take a guess. It looks like the same sort of cutouts that are like strung up on strings, and it does look like that's his pirate ship, you know, Foxy's pirate ship from uh, the Curse of Dreadbear DLC. So that's probably what that is. Now, in between that, I don't know what those things are on display. There's like little like cases with stuff on it. I'm not sure what that is, but 
it's just another screenshot of the museum which i'm very excited to be checking out whenever the game is released anyways let's continue with the article and uh, like i said we do have a lot more screenshots to go through and a lot more to read so we got to get into this so it says now that we've had uh, now that we had a concert venue as the centerpiece we needed to surround it with activities and attractions of every type we wanted to put we wanted a putt-putt golf course, go-karts, laser tag, retro arcades, modern arcades, dance floors, a movie theater, everything. However, Five Nights at Freddy's is not a series about set design, it's about the horrific animatronic stars. So we decided to, to, to design a character-specific attraction for each member of the band. Uh, so we probably didn't get the whole, you know, dance floor or, or movie theater, but I mean, a movie theater would be pretty cool, man. If we can go in there and like watch movies, that'd be sick. Anyways, he says, due to the ongoing adventures of Freddy in Space, we immediately went to work on Glamrock Freddy's Bazer Blast laser game. It was the first set mock-up completed in the entire game. Not only did we want to honor the source material, but we really wanted to include solid references to Scott's super fun side scrollers. Everyone in the studio looked at Roxanne Wolf, and we just knew she was meant to be a racer. She would become the brutally competitive go-kart champion of Roxy Racers. The art team had a blast making her a trophy-winning daredevil in the raceways surrounding art. Not only was the location heavily inspired by Roxy's rebellious look, the raceway art then then informed her elitist personality, or, or no, yeah, then informed her elitist personality and VO performance. She is the best and will never let the losers know it. Ah, and we'll let the losers know it. Sorry, I read that completely wrong. She's the best and we'll let the losers know it. So this is her raceway and man, this looks crazy looking. So there's a showroom garage, which is going to be interesting. So we're going to be able to go inside of there. There's a giant like tank truck thing right there beside it um you've got a small bumper car rink which is cool and that's inside the raceway so you can race around and then inside the raceway you can actually go in and play bumper cars which is cool um there's a staircase that leads over it you've got a crash cam a crash demo area and then for reference they kind of like show two screenshots above that interesting so there's a crash demo area i don't know about you guys but the first thing that comes to my mind when i see that and the whole design they have there is we're gonna crash uh, roxanne wolf into that wall somehow i feel like she's gonna be chasing us around we're gonna have to start the car somehow get it to crash into her and then boom that's how we get that version of roxanne wolf where she's all beat up or whatever if there is gonna be one i think that's probably what's gonna happen there i mean come on that looks way too easily set up we're either gonna hit her with like a race car or we're gonna have to get chased through here get her lined up with the car get the car started boom hits her right into the wall that that's roxanne wolf done i don't know that that's just complete speculation but that'd be interesting if that does happen all right come back to this video and reference it <laughs> anyways it says registration info slash area to the right so this is where you'd obviously you know get your show them your id and stuff like that and you know get signed up for the race car and stuff uh get some warranty and uh whatever it's called you know some some safety stuff signed before you just go out there some contract signed before you go out there and risk your life in their little race car track um but yeah this looks really really cool man and even like the garage references if it looks like that on the inside that's gonna be cool i don't know what cars are gonna have in there they have like freddy fazbear cars or the the, the freddy lamborghini <laughs> i don't know the fazbear lamborghini i have no idea but it looks really cool regardless i'm very much excited to see more of this anyways as we go on in the article it says montgomery gator inspired the montes gator golf indoor putt putt golf course the toxic barrels of brightly colored ball pits flew flow through a black light course of wooden shacks water hazards and rock and roll Icon iconography. I can't read that. I'm not even gonna try. We wanted Monty to have <laughs> arguably the worst hazards of any course ever. Have you ever tried golfing while surrounded by ball pits? Ooh, that sounds cool. Okay, so they wanted it to be like uh, a very toxic, bright, um, vibrant golf course, which is like uh, around me. I have a skating ring, which I'm not gonna say the name of it, but um, it, there's a skating ring by me, and it's the same kind of look, just like this where it's like you've got they have like stuff on the walls that when the lights that shine on them it makes it look like radioactive or whatever it's called i don't know there's a word for it but i can't think of the word right now i'm sure you guys can tell me in the comment section down below but that is exactly what it looks like inside the ice skating ring so i've never seen a golf course like that but hey i'll take it that's gonna bring back some memories of like i or not ice skating uh roller skating i was calling it ice skating the whole time but roller skating as a as a kid that's very very cool though look how bright and vibrant it is in there and uh you got gregory right there i'm assuming that is and he's just playing some putt putt golf and that is sick dude getting chased through there like jumping into the ball pit which we did see a ball pit at some point in the trailer but i think that took place in like the daycare area 
but I don't know. I mean, maybe that took place in Monty's Gator Golf. Either way, very, very cool looking. I love this screenshot. Now we have another one right here, and this is the Gator Golf Lobby. And uh, man, this looks cool too. So there's an there's a escalator or whatever where you can go up, and then there's like TVs on the wall. There's that that attraction which we've seen in the trailer. So we've seen the part of this in the trailer already. But look at all like the greenery and the trees and everything it just looks so cool even like a little like lounge area by the staircase where you can look at like scores of different players and stuff like that and uh, the main entrance to the gator golf area man that is so cool i really hope we can actually ride these rides in the game because they look like a lot of fun and i mean they, they designed them so you'd figure they probably are rideable but we'll have to wait and see either way that is a nice looking area to be in uh anyways it goes on to say finally we had to put ourselves in the mindset of fazbear entertainment what do they want what are they really after does anyone know for for sure what we know is that they want to squeeze as much money as possible from every visitor we looked at a real a real world reference to develop a fazbear appropriate list of money making schemes throughout the building the real world experience the mega pizza Plex has very personal ties to me i was a child of the 80s in tacoma wa where i grew up hiding from the rain in movie theaters uh bowling alleys arcades and indoor malls so yeah i grew up hiding in all these different areas that are featured in the game there are also several quirky pizzerias and fun centers in the area as a teen i became an usher slash projectionist at my local multiplex all of the client facings areas were flashy shiny neon and impressive however if you go behind the scenes like i did then you witness the disgusting underbelly where the teen work staff lives working in filthy concession stands cleaning bathrooms storing boxes of soda syrup and chain link storage pens hydraulically compacting uh, stacks of cardboard and garbage bags and sweeping piles of oily popcorn behind movie screens during busy weekends are some of the best real real world experiences i could have had to prepare for this project that's interesting yeah because i mean i grew up at in the 1990s basically into the early 2000s but i, I went to chuck e cheese a lot and uh it, it, some of these areas that we're seeing it definitely reminds me like of that in some way um now we do still have chuck e cheese around me but it's nowhere near as busy as it used to be i remember those places used to be packed and now there's one by me that looks like it hasn't seen a child in in many many years and then there's another one by me that it's like in a a, a old old parking lot and it, it's like to get into the to the actual chuck e cheese you have to basically go through like the back alley which is the weirdest entrance i've ever seen in my life it's so weird but yeah it, that's very cool that he got to like live through that and experience it though man it's awesome so he shows these uh reference images our images here and it says the tacoma washington pizza and pipes burned down in 1999 and this is a very cool screenshot i mean I mean sad but cool because look at like the just the history in this one screenshot you guys can see like there's a, a pinball machine right there there's just a bunch of stuff like this is like you can see the main stage over there this place looks massive way bigger than any place i've ever been in that looks like this. like this is a really big area at least from this screenshot and the firefighter just climbing up to like you know i don't know work on the fires up there i have no idea i guess just kind of like assessing the situation but man that looks really crazy looking i've always wanted an animatronic which i told you guys many times but yeah this, like this would be like the area you get an animatronic the place burned down they're like okay we got to get rid of these animatronics here you go here we're selling them but uh anyways we continue we have another reference of uh, arcade maintenance picture courtesy of the ruckus room bellingham all right and then this is what it looks like so this is where i guess they work on all of their different machines and uh stuff like that I, i've seen stuff like this before yeah this i don't know why this like brings back memories of just like growing up for some reason but very cool it's just like all the arcade machines and pinball machines stuff like that that they work on and uh man that is cool um even got some midway classics in there and stuff like that cool all right so uh we continue on it says insider knowledge the importance of carpet my brother colin owns an arcade called the ruckus room in bellingham throughout the development of the game he was a great source of insider industry information on the actual family fun centers especially while all the fun centers were closed during covid he told us about the importance of decorative carpet tiles yes yeah, see if you've ever been to a skating ring well i don't know how it is in other areas but that is at the carpet they're going to show later on is identical to what you have in a skating ring and arcades and everything apparently new carpet designs are one of the hottest items at family's fun center conventions armed with that knowledge we knew that the, the mega pizza plex had to have the best carpet squares in the world so if you look closely every themed area has multiple personalized fazbear carpet designs in various colors and imagery which reflects the theme of the zone 
And then this is the Carpetal design reference, um, courtesy of the Ruckus Room. There is certainly more to discuss about the design of the building than we can cover in one blog post. You're going to have to experience the Mega Pizza Plex yourself to truly under understand the scope of the building. So yeah, we know this building is going to be a lot bigger than what they've shown, and there's going to be a lot in it. Like, there's going to be a lot of stuff in a lot of different areas, so it's oh man i'm so excited like i said the game is coming out so soon it's gonna be crazy and i very much can't wait but yeah this is like the design of the carpet that they kind of you know took reference from i guess um but yeah which i like i said that brings back memories just seeing that and just seeing the lighting on that you have to perfect the lighting okay because like it's one thing to have the carpet but you have to have like a certain lighting on the carpet to where it like glows and stuff it, it's very cool um and you don't really see that anymore in today yeah for whatever reason i still think that carpet's awesome you got to have that in your arcade but most arcades are very modern nowadays but either way very very cool so guys that was a uh, backstage tour of the pizza plex from fnaf security breach by the creative director so very very cool i definitely hope that we get some kind of art book with more of this stuff in it because i'd love to buy it and just look through it all uh, i think that'd be very cool but yeah, that that's just, I, I mean, I guess they kind of just released this to kind of hold this over until the release. Like I said, the game is literally right around the corner, which is terrifying to think about. But it's been cool to see all your comments there. Like every video I upload, like, I can't wait for Fusion. Just waiting. I like, I can't wait for you to do your first part. I can't wait for you to walk through. Yeah, it's, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be a lot of fun. And it's going to be very, very stressful because I'm going to be covering every single part of the game that I possibly can for you guys. And from what I heard, the game is going to be massive. So... I've got my work cut out for me, but uh, yeah, I'm going to be getting every ending that I can, every secret that I can, everything, and apparently that's going to take quite a while, but I'm definitely going to do it, and uh, I'm very excited to do so. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, leave a like on the video down below. Hit that subscribe button right now if you're new and looking forward to Security Breach, because this is your place to be for that, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace out.